What's up? It's your girl from BeFit. If you don't know who I am, I'm an online weight loss coach who's dedicated to calling out all the BS in the fitness industry and providing you with accurate fitness, nutrition, and weight loss information. Today, we're talking all about protein. I've been getting so many questions about protein lately. I just wanted to address everything in one video. So what are the benefits of protein? Like why should you make sure you're eating enough? How much protein you should be eating? And the myths that I hear a lot about protein. And I'm super excited to say that this video is sponsored by Built Bar, my new favorite protein bar ever. Like they're insanely good and they're having a Cyber Monday sale today. So I wanted to make sure that you guys knew about it. Today, they're launching their new white chocolate cookies and cream flavor. Whew, you guys, these bars are so good. I have a discount code for you. It is FrumpyFit20, which will, will actually get you 28% off on Cyber Monday, but any other day besides Cyber Monday, that'll give you 20% off. And wait, I almost forgot, in addition to getting 28% off your order, getting the new brand new flavor of white chocolate cookies and cream, they're also giving away a free advent calendar with each order. They sent these to me like before they were available so that I would get to try it and so I'm gonna try it. I can already tell it's so good. It's better than I thought it was gonna be, honestly. They have like 18 different flavors and this one is definitely my favorite one. Like it's not even a question. But anyway, thank you Built so much for sponsoring this video. Let's get into it. So there are three main benefits of protein. The first one is kind of what everybody talks about in fitness, which is maintaining or growing lean body mass or muscle tissue. The next one is one of my personal favorites and that out of the three macronutrients, carbs, fat, and protein, protein is the most satiating out of the three. So what does that word even mean? It kind of sounds like satisfying. Satisfying is more of like a mental thing, like you feel mentally satisfied, but satiating is like the physical sensation of fullness. So it can help you feel fuller longer, which if you're in a calorie deficit, you might be experiencing more hunger than usual. So that's a really important benefit for anyone who is losing weight or in a calorie deficit, which is the same thing. And the third benefit is that it has the highest thermal effect of food. So out of the three macronutrients, again, carbs, fat, and protein, protein burns, like it takes most energy to digest protein compared to fat and carbs. Like it takes the energy to digest it. So then the calories aren't, you know, it cancels out. Now the thermal effect of food isn't anything that's gonna like significantly impact weight loss, but it is an important benefit to mention. Okay, so probably the most asked question that I get is how much protein should I be eating? There are so many random recommendations from people on social media who are like fitness professionals giving out their recommendations for protein. And a lot of them are using like outdated advice, like the example of saying that everybody should consume one gram per pound of body weight. I once had a client like way in the beginning who came to me and some guy like made her macros for her and he had her eating like 200 plus grams of protein there's no reason that she should have been eating that much protein it's way more than one gram per pound of body weight and actually i've changed my recommendation i can't remember sometime this year so if you see any content from me in the past making protein recommendations. This is the updated one. This is the new one. This is what you should follow based on the current research. And I'm actually just gonna pull straight from Alan Aragon because he's an amazing nutritional researcher and knows much more than me, is way more up to date on the current research than I am. So he's a great resource and I totally trust him. He made an amazing Instagram post about this exact thing, which I will link in the description, but I'll also explain it here for you guys in this video. In his post, he also has the the scientific references that he used in order to formulate this recommendation. So there are basically two different ways you can go about calculating your protein. The first one is based on your lean body mass or how much muscle tissue you have. And the second one is based on your goal or desired body weight. And I don't typically recommend using the lean body mass method because calculating your body fat percentage, which then will help you figure out your lean body mass is not super accessible to everybody and the methods that are more accessible have a quite a large margin of error. So if you were trying to calculate your body fat percentage and lean body mass 
for the purpose of calculating your protein, it is gonna, I think, unnecessarily complicate it and potentially be inaccurate anyway. So I tend to recommend using the goal weight method and that is what I use with my clients. But if you're interested in the lean body mass method for calculating that, I'll put the like information you need to know right here. You can pause the video and calculate that. But I want to jump into what I use with all of my clients, which is the goal body weight method. Okay, so the first step kind of in the name, which is to come up with your goal weight. And I get a lot of questions from women that I do consultations with or just comments from you guys asking like, what should my goal weight even be? And I'm glad that you're not super attached to a number and you're trying to critically think about that, but it's hard to give a specific recommendation. If I was going to give a recommendation on how you could figure out what your goal body weight should be, I would say that depends on why you're losing weight in the first place. If your goal is for health reasons, then your doctor is probably going to be the best one to help you figure out what your goal body weight should be, assuming that your doctor is helping you manage and deal with any health complications that you might be having in relation to your weight. In terms of health, I really don't believe that there's an exact number that everybody should be. So that's why it's important to think about your particular circumstances and any health issues you're facing and deal with that with your one-on-one -on -one physician. If you're losing weight for aesthetic purposes, it's also a little bit challenging to give a specific recommendation. If I had to come up with a tip, I would say keep in mind how tall you are because how tall you are will definitely impact the way a different body weight looks on your body compared to somebody else. For some reason, I think a lot of us forget that like height plays a huge role in how certain weights will sit on your body. For example, 150 pounds on someone who's five foot and 150 pounds on somebody that's like five nine is gonna look very, very different. So if you're attached to a specific weight number for some specific reason, I would detach from that and really think about your specific needs based on your goals. But also don't think too much into this, okay? I don't want you to stress too much about it. It's not that serious. Just come up with a ballpark number. Okay, so let's calculate it. If you're using pounds as your measurement, then you're gonna multiply your goal or desired body weight by 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight. So your goal body weight times 0.7, you can jot that number down. And then you're also gonna multiply your goal body weight by one gram per pound. So really just the exact number of your goal body weight. If your measurement is in kilograms, you're gonna take your goal or desired body weight in kilograms and multiply that number by 1.6 grams of protein. And then you're gonna multiply your goal body weight also by 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight, goal body weight. So this is going to be the range that's gonna be most optimal for you to consume on a daily basis. And if this is much higher than you're used to consuming, do not panic, don't stress. Usually with my clients, I start them lower than this range and I wait to see how easy it is for them to incorporate that amount of protein in their diet and then I increase as they get better at incorporating protein into their diet. And so if you want some tips to eat more protein without having to eat tons of meat or drink protein shakes, definitely check out this video right here because I give all my best tips of how I was able to eat 130 grams of protein per day with very little meat and no protein shakes. And I also just wanna mention that if you aren't eating up into this range, it's not the end of the world, so I don't want you to panic and get overwhelmed. If you eat less than this range, then you're just missing out on everything being perfectly optimal and having the most optimal benefits from the protein that you're consuming every day. And I want you to remember, and this is true for any recommendation that I give, is optimal is not always what is gonna be the best decision. Sustainability is the most important thing. So if eating that amount of protein is so overwhelming for you that you're just like, nope, I'm out, I don't wanna, I'm not even gonna think about protein anymore, I want you to rethink that mindset a little bit and say like, I'm gonna do my best with what I'm able to and whatever is sustainable for me. And if in the future I can get better and get to a place that's more optimal, awesome. But if I can't, not the end of the world, consistency and sustainability. Consistency and sustainability are the most important things here. I would rather you be close to your range and be consistent with that than constantly be trying and failing at hitting that 
perfect range of protein. I also want to mention that this is just a general recommendation. I don't know you personally. And so if you have any concerns or reasons that you might think that you should eat more or less, then you should consult somebody one on one to come up with a more tailored protein goal for you. And so now I just want to finish off with some myths or like the biggest questions that I see people asking about protein. So on the one hand, I've seen people say, I'm worried about eating too much protein because I heard that it, the excess protein can get stored as fat. And then on the other hand, I see people saying like, I'm consuming more protein because it's less likely to get stored as fat. And I believed this this side at first when I was in bodybuilding, I was like, oh, that explains why so many bodybuilders are consuming insane amounts of protein because it's like less likely to get stored as fat compared to the other macronutrients. And so it is true that excess protein in the form of excess calories can get stored as fat, but that's true for any macronutrient for fat and for carbs as well. Any excess calories do have the potential of getting stored as fat. It's not unique to protein. So I wouldn't worry about that. But in terms of protein being safer to consume because it's less likely, <laughs> less likely to get stored as fat, I'm going to say that's busted. I mean, if you're in a calorie surplus and you're weight training, then that protein will help build muscle tissue, which would mean you're gaining muscle rather than fat. So kind of in that way, but that doesn't mean that you can just eat as much protein as you want and not gain fat. So consider both of those busted in a way. And the other two myths that I wanna address about protein also kind of go hand in hand. So on the one side, I've seen people say that like excess protein is bad for you. Like it's actually bad for your kidneys and your liver and stuff. And that is not true. But I've also seen like research that actually shows that high protein diets are associated with a shorter lifespan. And I actually saw this when I was watching that one Zac Efron show on Netflix, where they were saying that people in blue zones, those zones in the world where people are randomly living a lot longer than other people, those people would tend to eat a lower protein diet. And I see this argument a lot when you compare like a, a omnivore diet to a vegetarian or a vegan diet. And so the thing that these studies typically aren't looking at or paying attention to is the fact that people who eat vegetarian or vegan diets also tend to just be more health conscious in general. And so that means they're also engaging in other health benefiting activities and behaviors. Whereas the typical person who tends to be omnivore isn't as health conscious. If someone is choosing to be vegetarian or vegan, and I'm not saying everybody who chooses to be vegetarian or vegan fits into this category, but of that category of people, a higher percentage of them are more health conscious compared to the typical omnivore diet person. So yes, while a higher protein diet might be associated with a shorter lifespan, it's not showing you the full picture. And so it's not fair to just make that claim that eating more protein means your life is going to be shorter. And the last question slash myth that I want to address is that your body can only absorb a certain amount of protein at each meal. And I don't have an exact answer for this in terms of like a number. I don't know if there is one. I've seen people make guesses or general recommendations for this, but in general, whether you can absorb a high amount of protein or not, it's more beneficial to consume protein in like multiple meals throughout the day than it is in one giant meal, just in terms of muscle protein synthesis. Basically what that's good for is building or maintaining lean body mass. So if that's a goal for you, which I think that it should be, then it's more beneficial to consume regular servings of protein throughout the day rather than having all of it in one sitting. So I hope all these tips were helpful for you. Let me know in the comments if you have any additional questions about protein. And as usual, guys, thank you so much for your support. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe here. You can also follow me on TikTok and on Instagram, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!